morning everybody we're here in Pembina North Dakota the Canadian border is one mile that way and we're headed that way my load didn't clear till this morning so here we sit because we're on the American side of the border I had to sit for 10 hours consecutively to reset my log so that I could drive the mile to Canada if I was on the Canadian side I would have only had to stop for eight well, some guys might have just gone and done it anyway. So, oh, you're just a mile from Canada. I couldn't get myself to. I guess I'm just too honest. Got these shingles on my trailer. I'm gonna go get them unloaded in Winnipeg today. Then we're gonna go swing by home. Our renter brought back our trailer, our uh, camper. I think I'm gonna call him Rock. I like that. That's what most of you guys. Uh, Suggested we call our travel trailer. That's for rent. I gotta talk to Britt about it yet, I guess, but I think she'll like it. The trailer just came back from a rental. It was another great, successful rental. We had a great renter. Five-star review for her. Took care of everything. Knew what they were doing. It was a, a lady and her two daughters. So it felt good to be able to help a, a family go out and have a good camping experience. I hope they come back and rent from us again. So we've been solidly booked for rentals through uh, through August, which is great. I'm expecting more bookings to come in as time goes. Uh, it's a little too early, I guess, right now to expect. Uh, people don't plan their vacations that far in advance all the time, I guess. But uh, yeah, we got it back yesterday. It goes out on another rental this next weekend, and then the rest of the season is still wide open if any of you want to rent our trailer. ourselves across the border here we were hoping to get across the border last night yet but the paperwork didn't clear in time Every single time. I can't go that way. That's not a truck route. 
You're supposed to be a truck GPS. This is why no one trusts you. We're in St. Adolph, Manitoba. 300 meters, turn left on Main Street, Highway 200. It's not even the weekend. Karen's been drinking again. She's got a problem. Wants to send me down the no truck route over there. I'm gonna go straight. So we are in a bit of a rush. A lot of a rush. I've got to get to Kenora today and load today yet. And I've got quite the rounder ahead of me, quite the trip ahead of me. By the time you watch this, I'll probably already be back. But, uh, we're going to Prince Edward Island. Is that a house on the road? Let me clean my window here. Let me clean my window here. What's going on here? That's a house. In 300 meters, turn left on Highway 59. Holy smokes! <laughs> He's dragging it through the ditch to get around me. I don't know how they can possibly issue permits for that on a two-lane road, but it happens all the time here on the prairies. It was the last one they had available. It's not the prettiest trailer, but it'll do the job. It's kind of hoping to have a nice pretty trailer to pull east with me, but that's okay. We have a nice functional trailer. That works too. Okay, it's a bit of an older trailer, but it has a recent safety on it. It just got safety. So at least I know it's good to go, right? I don't got time to wait around for a better better looking trailer. I'm in a hurry. We have to get loaded today or it's gonna throw a wrench in the whole plan. So, should make it, no problem. I just don't wanna waste time because I always know there's gonna be something. There's always something. I know there's construction in Ontario yet. And who knows what the delays will be there from that. let the shipper know that I'm on the way. I'm going to be pushing it pretty close. Oh, what's going on here? What's going on here? Oh, I see. There should be a warning vehicle or something for traffic coming around the corner that there's going to be a tractors on the road. <laughs> Hopefully that cause an accident but what I was saying is that the shipper knows we're coming so we will get loaded today we'll be their last truck getting loaded so we've been going as fast as we're able to get loaded we'll get tarped and we'll be on our way we're getting very close to the end of their shipping hours you know how shippers are, they get a little bit nervous when you say you're going to be there, right? You know, right at the last point where you're supposed to be there. Because a lot of people, they'll say, yeah, 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 I'll be there at 3.30. Then they'll show up at 4.30, right? They'll just say that so that you'll agree to load them. And then you'll wait around for them. And then you got to load them. Now, I like to give an accurate time. And then I'll add 15 minutes to it. That way, I can show up 15 minutes early from when I said I'd be there. And then they're happy and they trust me next time I tell them. Okay, I know I'm coming pretty late, but I will be there at 3.30. That way they know I'll probably be there at 3.15. Or at the very least, when I say I'd be there. As soon as drivers start lying to them, when they know they're only gonna be there at four o'clock or 4.30 and they tell the shipper I'll be there at 3.30 just so that they'll wait around for them. That breaks the trust like that. And then they don't believe anybody. So always give an accurate ETA and then add 15 minutes. If you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. You just gotta accept it. Don't try to pull a fast one and get them to stick around because then it's harder for the rest of us. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So far I'm on track to be there 15 minutes earlier than when I told them I'd be there. That way they agreed to load me at a certain time 
and he'll be pleasantly surprised that, oh, that's nice, he's here early. some water. I'm thirsty. 
That was a rush getting here. But we got her. Hey, get out of here. Fly, you were not invited. You see that? Fly, it's just like walk right in uninvited. Like, rude. I don't walk into their house uninvited, do I? No, I destroy their house. Oh, what's going on? So, we are going to get loaded. Thank the powers that be. Just gonna move up in line here a little bit on the last truck they're loading today. I'm not sure exactly when they go home. I think they might go home in a half hour, so it won't take that long to load me. I'll just throw this stuff on my trailer and then uh, they can go home. And I just gotta tarp it on my way out be in Brainerd tomorrow, get it off my trailer. And we gotta head down to a town called uh, Lindsay, Lindsay, Nebraska. It's gonna be a little bit of a deadhead, a bit of empty miles. So most of the day tomorrow, the rest of the day tomorrow, we'll be just traveling there. I don't think we'll quite get there. Or maybe we will, yeah, maybe we will. we'll get close to Lindsay, Nebraska anyway. Then the next day we load up our load. I still don't know what it is, I don't really care. Whatever, is it legal? It can fit on my trailer? Let's, let's go. Put it on. Load me up. We'll pick that up and then I'm expected. I have five days to get up to Prince Edward Island. And it's about 4,000 kilometers, uh, which is about four days of driving. Um, I believe it's 4,000 kilometers. Let's double check here. Um. One sec. I want to figure out what this is right now for my American friends in the States anyway. Okay, from Lindsay, Nebraska to let's just say Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. I don't know exactly, I don't remember the town on Prince Edward Island, but it's a very small island, so. Three, nope, 3,382 kilometers. Sorry, just over 3,000, not 4,000. So you go 3,382 divided by 1.61, 2,100 miles from Nebraska to Prince Edward Island. We're gonna be loading up Friday midday. And then we have part of Friday to drive yet, right? We can drive until night. And then one, two, three. I should be able to be there Monday night. One, two, three. Yeah, I should be able to get there Monday night if I don't run out of hours on my 70. Because in the US, they have a different rule than us. And in Canada here, I can drive 70 hours in seven days. And then on the eighth day, I can take the hours from the first day and recap them. And in the States, it's eight days for some reason. I don't know why they picked like a week plus a day. It doesn't make sense to me, but why not? That's their rules. So eight days. I can drive 70 hours in eight days. So on the ninth day, I can recap the hours from the first day instead of the... So I can't get as far again. I can't haul as much weight and I can't get as far when I'm in the U.S. But whatever, they have really nice roads and it's nice visiting there because the people are really nice. The roads are nice. The countryside's nice, and it's always nice visiting our neighbors. So, as long as I don't run out of hours, either Monday night, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to reset along the way. I have a feeling. So that's why we made our delivery appointment for the Wednesday. I might run out of hours. Or it might take me longer than I thought to get there, and I only get there Tuesday, and I unload Wednesday morning. I don't know what's happening. Tuesday or Wednesday, we're gonna unload. And then I head back to Quebec, load up something in Quebec later that week, and then come home, and I should be home a couple of days after that. So including this trip, this past rounder that we just did, because I didn't go home in between. So it'd be about a two week trip, which is the longest trip I've done in a long time. But that, that's an average trip for a driver, uh, for on, on long haul or whatever. I'm just on regional, so I usually stick around, buzzing around closer to home, but I'm gonna stretch my legs a little bit on this one and go see what's on Prince Edward Island. I get across Confederation Bridge. It's the longest bridge in Canada. It used to be the longest bridge in the world. I believe the way it works is it's free to get in to PEI, but you gotta pay to get out. Once they get you, they don't wanna let you go. They like you that much. All right, I'm gonna get loaded here. The guy's coming here now. I'm gonna throw this on the trailer. Let's uh, Let's get her done. So here we are in the tarping station. We got loaded. So it'll just be two tarps. We'll bring the back one on first, then we'll put the front one on, button it all down, and head on the road. 
So this is how this whole system works here. So what I do first is I get the, both the tarps over and then I tack the corners of each tarp. So eight bungees, tack the corners so that they stay in place, especially if it's windy. I have the doors over there closed and the front one's open so you get a breeze in here, but it's quite a strong breeze. So I don't want to blow them right through here because it'll blow my tarps off. So I close the back doors to stop that from happening, but you still got a nice breeze in here. Uh, we're lucky here we get to do this inside and we have a machine to help us. Most places I have to crawl on top of the load and roll my tarp out on top of the load and spread it out and it's a lot more dangerous and a lot uh, more work. Very thankful for people who set up tarp sheds like this for us. It's very nice. Two guys can tarp at the same time in here. So now that I've got them all tacked down, I'm going to try to get the back of that front tarp as tight as possible so that we don't have any too much loose tarp in the middle there, right? Because you don't want that flapping because there's just a three, a bundle of three there, and then four and four on each side of it. So I don't want that flapping around in the wind too much. If I can't tighten it up enough, what I do is I'll put a strap right over the middle there, and a strap over the end of that tarp there to hold it in place. It's probably what we'll end up doing, but we'll see. Each time is a new artistic experience. Tarping is an art form. Each guy does it a little bit differently. I'm glad we're inside. It just started pouring. I'd have to do this in the rain. And now we're ready to go. When you're doing your tarps in the front here, this may seem obvious to some people, but you want to think of the wind passing over your truck this way. You want this flap in the front to be over the outside so that the wind goes around it. You want this front tarp on top of this back tarp so that the wind goes over it and not under it. Can you imagine if that was the front of the truck, the wind coming over this will get sucked right into there and you have a big balloon behind you here. I put these two straps here, just like I said. That's just to control the flapping there and that's to hold the tarp from sliding forward. Now on the back here, this back flap, you want to do the opposite because the air is coming around like this, right? So you want to put the flap on the inside so that the air can come around. And there you go. They're not the prettiest tarps. They need to be replaced. I'm gonna have to buy, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to buy new tarps this fall probably. They're about $1,800 or so, almost $2,000 for a set. Set of three, you have two end tarps like that. End tarps have a flap on it and one center tarp. That one doesn't have a flap on either end. That one just covers the middle. If I need to tarp the whole trailer, then those two aren't long enough. We are trucking. We're on Highway 71 in Ontario, headed south towards Fort Francis. That's where we're gonna cross into the US if our load is cleared by the time we get there.
favorite town in Brainerd. Seems that it's one of our favorite towns anyway. We're always here. And look at that, our load came with us. Nice. We're gonna drop this off here down the road. Well, it's already morning. We're gonna drop it off once the sun comes up. And then start on our journey uh, towards Nebraska. And then Prince Edward Island. I thought we would be traveling through the US and crossing from Maine into New Brunswick. By the looks of the map now that I'm looking at it, probably looks like we're gonna cross from uh, Detroit, Michigan into Windsor, Ontario, and then go up through Ontario, through Toronto, then through Montreal, through Quebec City, around top of Maine, and into New Brunswick, and across New Brunswick to PEI, through Canada. This actually works out better. It's 100 kilometers or 60 miles shorter to go through Canada like that. And like I was explaining earlier, I can go on the 70 hours and seven day Canadian hours of service then instead of sticking to the US side and having to follow 70 hours and eight days. That means I'll be able to get to my destination on Monday and deliver Tuesday instead of having to wait all the way till Wednesday and reset along the way. Cause I don't think I'd have enough hours to get through the US on the US hours of service. So this will actually work out in our benefit and we'll be uh, visiting, uh, well, flying, flying through Toronto at, at the speed limit as fast as we can go. So we'll talk more about that as the time comes closer. This is going to be a four day trip from here to Lincoln through Ontario. Okay, so what, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go from Minnesota here, I think through Iowa, a little bit and down into Nebraska and then across uh, through Iowa through Illinois through Indiana uh, Michigan to Ontario through Quebec through New Brunswick to Prince Edward Island it's gonna be a four-day trip just to get there and then once we unload there another day trip back to Quebec where I have a reload and then probably another two and a half to three day trip back home been a bit of a longer one than uh, we've been uh, doing recently. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited to stretch my legs a bit. It's, it's a good time. We don't have anything going on for the rest of the month. I, uh, it's as good a time as any to stretch my legs a little bit and go a little bit further and see what the East Coasters are up to. You potato farmers. That's what you grow out in Prince Edward Island mostly, right? Potatoes? Correct me if I'm wrong. I've only been there once before. This will be my second time to the island. Looking forward to it. So tune in tomorrow. We're gonna unload and head to Nebraska. I'll see you then. Take care, stay safe, and drive safe.